Hello and welcome back to uh, part two of the Shepherd's Crook. Now you saw me shape this and it's the very rough shape. Basically from here we're going to get it on top of the hazel shank. I've got a small bit of work to do to it. Just top and tail it and basically create the peg to go in this hole. But um, I have this on many other videos which you can see how I go about and do it. I'm not going to labour the point too much, but you will see what I'm doing. And uh, I want to get it to the point I can finish it reasonably swift. It's going to take 24 hours at least for the epoxy to harden off before I can work. Yet again, as I've always say, on the tin or the, the tube, it says it's, um, you know, within a few hours. But working with resins myself on other projects... The longer you can leave it, because uh, resin tends to mature. So the longer you can leave it, the harder it gets. So, um, yeah, I really like to leave it two days, but I've only got 24 hours. Because uh, I've got to factor in um, varnishing drying times to make the deadline. So, yeah, I'm going to top and tail this stick, stop prepping it, getting it ready. And once this is dry, we can start shaping all this end to meet the stick and uh, make it look like it flows better. Right then, so all I'm going to do is just tidy up the end. That there, obviously, uh, any splits or cracks or odd shapes and uh, angles, I'm not even going to try and attempt that. I'm going to get back to some good wood. So quite simply, all these tools here, and as you can see, it's simplicity itself. I'll be able to create the peg so that I can get it to fit inside and to go inside the hole. But that's as much as what I'm going to need. Nothing technical, nothing fancy. Right then, first step, let's get um, an idea how deep we've got to go. So if we get the actual crook just a drill bit that i used to drill out could be anything slide it back down i know that is the depth of the peg i'm just going to place it on the stick where my finger is and i'm going to mark it with a pencil in about three or four places going around the shaft and the reason I'm doing that is that's going to be where I make an initial stop cut. And a stop cut basically is a horizontal or, or latitudinal, I mean, cut straight into the shaft. So that as you start taking um, slithers of wood off, it doesn't go into the good part of the shaft. There, I think I can pretty much see where I've got to be. And what I do now is just get a piece of masking tape, put on that line, and I make sure all the lines marry up. And this is harder than it looks, but it pays dividends to get this bit right. Yeah. And I'll just do a little bit further down. Quite simply because that will become apparent with um, epoxy overspill. Get your stick then and just look along that line and make sure it flows right and with my saw all I'm going to do is put a um, stop cut right the way through following tracing the line of this actual um, bit of masking tape so let's get on and do that Thank you. 
So I've just got a bit of tracing paper and all I'm going to do is trace the actual size of the hole so I can transplant that onto the shaft or hazel shaft just to give me a kind of clear cut circumference of the peg size. As simple as that. This isn't necessary, it's just something I do to aid myself. And I just place it on the top and I can see where it's best going to sit within that piece of wood. Because not all wood is definitely all round. Some of it will be oval or oblong. Um, so this just aids me, that's all. So as you can see, I have a top part of the peg and I'm now going to start whittling away all around here down to the stop cut, which you can see I've cut to the, line, the masking tape line and I've had to select another piece of wood and come back to another piece I selected because I noticed some bad patches of bark which were beginning to lift and this is going to be a barked stick. So it was pointless going any further with that. I should have spotted it beforehand. I didn't. But in any case, um, we're now moving on with this uh, hazel shank. So all I'm going to do now is whittle down to the stop short line. So with a knife, I'm going to take very small slithers of wood away. And you can see there what's happening there. I've just locked the shaft into my legs. I'll try and bring it around for you so you can see. So basically, I'm going to continue going around like that till I produce my peg. And there's the slither that's come off. Obviously, it sat there. And as you can see, there's a lip there. And that's why you cut deep. So you don't end up breaking away the shaft below it. Um, the further you get into it, the more security you have. But the first few um, slivers you take off, you really have to be careful you don't damage that lip. So I'm going to continue that and um, I'll bring you back in a moment. But it is quite simply for me to continue doing this. Another one. Right, I'm all set up. I'm gonna. I've created the peg. I've got multiple videos of you being able to see how to do that, so you can check them out in that, some of my back videos. But I'm just set up now, ready to put the crook on top of um, the actual shank. So basically, I'm using a two-part epoxy. Um, I've got a channel carved in the actual peg to allow air to escape. Yet again, check out one of my old videos about all that. And now I've just broke the seal. Now I've got to uh, get this resin out. It is quite cold in here, so this resin is quite, um, quite stiff. But I'll get it out. It will go off in about four to five minutes. That's not workable hard. 
but it'd be hard enough for me to leave it. Well, it's beginning to run out. Make sure I get all of it. Because I've got such a big um, hole inside the actual uh, crook. I'm going to mix up probably more than I need. But better safe than sorry. I won't get a second chance. Uh, get the last of it out. Come on. Like I say, it's cold in here, so this resin is quite uh, thick. Going in, last bits. Uh, right. Now I'm going to stir it up. Yes, um, I could have probably done with bringing this in the house for a few hours just to warm it up or get it to room temperature. The thing is, if you get it to room temperature, it will go off even faster. It will actually, as it starts to go off and warm up, there will be a very small window where it will be actually a little bit more um, flexible. But that's very short-lived because as soon as it starts to put some heat on itself... It does mean it's going out, going off. Right. That. Right. Just going to put some into the actual. Um, and I'm being very careful that I don't trap air inside. Pushing it down in, like that. Put some around the actual lip. Yeah. Yeah. Coming back up to the peg. That on work all this down over use the last of it here. Just put the final bits. I think I've got enough in there, so I can probably afford to put that on top and around there. Right, if you can remember, so Jamie.
Well then guys, well here we are, we've actually got the crook attached to the shaft, I've got to take all this off, the shaft, what I'm going to do now, um, I've got a window of opportunity with the weather to get down into the woodshed and what I'm going to do is bring this to size and then bring it down, chamfer the wood down to accept the copper tip and then I'm going to strip a few patches on the actual shaft so I can do my wood burning and then obviously we're going to bring this down start sanding this down so it blends better with the actual uh, shank or shaft and as you see there's a fair step there and I've got to bring all this down and just blend it in but um, that's going to be a lot of uh, mess and dust so thankfully I'm down in the woodshed so that bears no impact on me in here but yeah um, this has had 24 hours and I'm pleased it's, it's given a nice tight uh, um, joint there so um, let's get down there and make this happen Well then guys, um, it's actually bitterly cold outside, I had my tea, I went in, sat down, um, did a few things indoors, next thing I know I drifted off and had a nap, but I'm out here, it's pitch black now, I'm in the workshop and oh, it is cold, I think, I think it's well below freezing out there, but in any case, um, we got to this point here and you can see the crook, I've managed to shape it into the shaft quite nicely there and I think it flows up quite well I took a lot of meat off down here I took some off on the sides and the top bit 
Well, I haven't upset the profile of the swan neck. You can see that's come around very nice. And it's quite manageable. I'll put my hand there. It's a nice size in relation to the actual shaft as well. Um, it is it is you would have to be really brutal with it to break it it's it's a it's a beautiful piece of wood it feels nice in the hand and that's not a bad size there to when you like oik um a sheep's leg to bring it to a stop it's um yeah it, it's a really nice stick so what have i got left to do well I sanded all the bark and got that how I want it. I've left my style of um, full bark stick. I usually leave a bit there. Incidentally, it's not for a gentleman. A gentleman has ordered it, but looking at his text message, it's going to be for a lady. So I've got to uh, wood burn her name. Obviously do my logo there. And I've got to put a copper tip on here now. Um, this little knuckle here, because most of my sticks I try to leave something a little bit quirky. Um, it kind of fits my brand of folklore. And uh, and this is no exception. Um, nice straight uh, stick, but it's just that little knuckle there that adds that little bit of distinctness. So, yeah, this is going to look extremely nice. But it's still a little way off yet before I can put any varnish on. Um, I've got to put the copper tip on, which I've got to make. Do the wood burning. And then we'll apply the first coat of yacht varnish. So, um, yeah, this will have to come indoors with me for the first coat to dry. Quite simply because it's just too cold out here. And I won't get that really good crisp clear finish that i'm looking for and i think that gives you the reason why so yeah let's crack on so incidentally i do have videos dedicated solely to how i go about making my copper tips so i'm not going to labor this particular point um and also how i go about wood burning so i'm going to get these two um parts of it done and then uh, we'll come back as I apply some varnish. But yeah, I'm going to convert this and make this into my uh, copper tip. And um, you'll see me doing a little bit of wood burning. And then we'll move swiftly straight into the um, varnishing. And um, how I go about doing that. Well, here we are. We have the completed item. It's had its finishing coat of polyurethane. I'm touching it gingerly because even though it's gone off, it could do with another 24 hours to case harden. So I'm touching it gingerly and um, it's going to stay with me for another day, maybe two, and just be allowed to go harder and harder and harder. But in any case, um, I'll let you have a look. You can see the grain in that has come out absolutely stunning. And as you can see, we've shaped most of that uh, thickness away and it flows with the shaft extremely nice. The curve is all looking really nice. It all works. And on this side, you can really see how the wood grew, the, gr the grain. It, it looks absolutely stunning. It's nice to the touch and feel. It's solid and robust. There's no way that will ever break. You would have to be trying to, you know, catch a, a couple ton cow with this 
for it to break but it's a nice size shaft and as you can see there's some nice bark on that some knuckles nice copper tip and on the opposite side the wood burning it's got my maker's name folklore the name of the lady in question hopefully that'll come the right way out on film might not but as you can see it's come out absolutely stunning and um, all that time and effort was worth um, putting into the crook because the end result is something that's definitely definitely um, I'm proud of and I think the customer at the end of the day is going to have this and it will be something they'll be um, you know proud to keep and show off wherever they go so yeah all that's left to be said is Thanks for coming along on this Shepherd's Crook build and I hope you can appreciate the time effort that is put into this to get it to this particular point. Yes, there are faster ways, there are better tools and um, there's probably um, a lot more that I have to learn before I can say that uh, I'm very proficient in doing this type of woodworking. But... I'm very pleased with the result and I think the customer will be. So yeah, all that's uh, left to be said is thanks for coming along. Take care, stay safe and I have to, hope to catch you guys out on the trail.